you have been a part of co creating some innovative delivery platforms do share some of your favorites and you know in large terms uh, what is the scale impact okay sure um so let me start by saying one of my most favorite projects was the one that i actually did when um, when i was with sesame and it was called radiophone um and the reason why i'm you know extremely fond of that project was because we partnered with um, with about 10 community radio stations in north india to actually reach populations that were in media dark areas who did not have access to let's say television or anything else but actually were reached by our partners through the community radio platform um and it was innovative in many many different ways one is because as you know sesame is um is predominantly a television focused um resource for uh, for kids so to really translate that into an audio focused show that had great impact um was a big challenge and um and you know there was a lot of concern areas because um sesame's um uh, core objective in the way they really teach kids is through a muppet interaction which is a more visual type of you know format um and this was a completely audio format so um so it was um, it was great to kind of just work on that on that um uh, project um i think the second reason why i believe um you know i really really love this project is because we used a very very participatory approach so to create the content as well as broadcast the content and to measure impact we really worked with our community uh radio partners to do it um and the way it worked was that we would broadcast the show but at the end of the show we would also have people who could call in and leave feedback messages and then we could make it go viral uh this project was also evaluated by ideo sing who work a lot in you know community participatory research techniques etc and they conducted the impact study which was a third party research for us and it showed huge impact um with a lot of um, different types not just learning outcomes changing in children but also how um a lot of community radio stations actually acquired a lot of women listeners um you know so there were ripple effects that we did not know will happen but it happened so i think um that's one of the innovative approach and in terms of scale we could reach about you know radio unfortunately is not so measurable in this country but just through the data um that we could collect um and what our community partners told us um we we reached about um 200,000 families across um across these um, 10 communities so um so that was really an interesting project um you know that um, that I like very much in terms of innovation um i think the second one that we did uh which was really innovative was the one that uh we did with uh, with lego foundation and again this was you know while i was at sesame it was um, it was a three country project um and india was one of the selected countries and the reason why it was innovative was because i think for the first time we really looked at you know specific strategies um and activities to empower parents in the low income population on how they could engage with children through play and how that really impacts children's overall development particularly around some of the 21st century skills around communication collaboration creativity imagination etc and of course literacy and numeracy emotion literacy and numeracy were the big areas so i guess that was you know pretty innovative um, as well um so yeah i mean i have a lot of examples it's a huge career but maybe i'll just stop here and uh and kind of you know uh, allude to these two uh we've done a lot of innovative work with governments to provide innovative materials and aganwadi centers you know right now top parent i believe is a very innovative project in itself um and we are seeing a lot of um a lot of views and engagement 
uh, which are very high. It's a digital product. And again, you know, I was inspired by the Lego project and really wanted to work using technology as a way to reach um, parents and how to empower them and support them um, so that children could continue to learn. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That was my next question. The top parent app supports a child learning at home. I would request you to highlight some uh, key aspects of the app and what are the challenges it tries to uh, address? Sure. Um, so let me start with the challenges, right? One is that, you know, even before the pandemic hit, you know, we know that the status of the early childhood development in this country had extremely poor indicators, right? I mean, India houses the largest number of young children in the world, but for many, many years in India, this was a big neglected area, right? And Anganwadi centers, which are supposed to provide whole child development, uh, you know, because these years are the most formative in for a child, right? 90% of brain development happens by the time you're six years old, you know, and whatever you learn, whatever stimulus is, is given to you during this period really sets the platform and the foundation for lifelong learning. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the system at, at scale level, at the government level, uh, was um, extremely focused on nutrition, which is, of course, a very, very important aspect. But as a result of that, a lot of the other areas were neglected. Right. I mean, we are probably the only country in the world. Maybe there are a few more, but I'm talking about you know, in general, um, where you know we don't have early childhood education practitioners who are actually deploying and interacting with kids at that age. Right. I mean, we have Anganwadi workers who do an extremely amazing job, but are not necessarily trained or have the capacity to really take it to the next level. So that was one uh, piece of it. Um, the second was this data that, you know, said that even though enrollment was at an all time high, attendance was very low, right? Like the NSSO survey, I think in 2019 highlighted that, you know, 72% of kids were not attending any preschool or any informal or formal you know, preschool settings. Um, so as a result of that, these, I mean, I call it the lost generation, frankly, because these are the kids who are not getting any support anywhere. Uh, frankly, they just don't have the resources. Uh, there's worldwide study to say that parental engagement can actually provide, um, you know, outcomes that are related to a child's learning development as well as overall development. So we did a huge user study in 2019 with about 550 respondents in Delhi, Bhopal, and, uh, and the NCR in general. And, um, and when we asked parents, you know, what, what was the issue? What was the barrier? You know, they all said one word, you know, and the saksham word then became a very critical thing because a lot of parents came from, you know, these are all mostly first generation learners. A lot of parents, you know, did had low literacy levels, they didn't have the resources, they had very low digital literacy levels as well. So, you know, they all said, Ki humko pata nahi, internet mein humko kya karna chahiye, kaun sa cheez bache ke liye acha hai. right? So they kind of alluded to the fact that they didn't know. And I think the second big insight that we got was that a lot of parents felt that the mobile, and this was pre-COVID, right? So a lot of parents felt that the mobile was good for halka fulka learning, you know, light learning, like rhyme six up they hain, gana wana six up they hain. But it wasn't attuned or aligned to the school learning or what they considered education, right? Like in their heads, that's education. So, um, so we started developing Top Parent and, you know, we, we had the prototype ready by March. And then, of course, April, the lockdown hit. So we launched the prototype version of Top Parent, which was a very, very basic app, which basically provided parents through videos 
you know, tips, resources, strategies on what they could do with their kids at home in order to continue to foster learning through play. Um, and activities using everyday materials, everyday household chores, everyday activities like going to the market or, you know, etc. Um, and we also use the platform to actually um, promote and push adoption of three edtech solutions at that time who were our partners. So one was this fabulous edtech solution called Chimple. Um, you know, and they were all free. There was, you know, at that time, Google had launched a reading app called Polo, which now is called Read Along. Um, and then there was, a, you know, app called um, uh, KitKat Learning, which was an XPRIZE finalist and uh, Central Square Foundation had uh, provided support to actually get the app um, contextualized in India and we called it Mathmasti. So that's pretty much what we did. Uh, we got a huge amount of response. We got about 150,000 downloads. There were about 55,000 child apps that were downloaded by families. You know, we saw fairly high engagement for about 12 weeks. Uh, but then after 12 weeks, we felt users were leaving us. Um, so we went back to the drawing board last year uh, to just determine like what was going on because unless kids and parents are on the app, and they are getting a regular dosage of, you know, uh, content. Uh, learning is not going to happen, right? I mean, kids learn in different ways. Um, so we conducted, a, again, a very large survey last year. Uh, we couldn't do it on the ground. So we did like pretty much a WhatsApp poll survey. Um, we ran a lot of AB experiments and we, um, we revamped the product. Uh, so Top Parent 2.0 was launched in March this year. Um, we think it's a fantastic product and we are seeing some super results. You know, it's still early days, but, uh, but the product basically worked on four key insights that we got from parents. The first insight was that, you know, a lot of parents felt lost, whether it is for their child. So, you know, it wasn't age specific in that sense. The second thing they told us is that it lacked a plethora of resources. Uh, you know, that you only have game solution and how to learn about it. The third thing was that, you know, a lot of parents said that, uh, you know, at that time, a lot of the pandemic behavioral pattern or mind shift change had come in, right? So the big shift for us was that now parents didn't think that mobiles cannot be used for learning because digital learning had become the new law. You know, the government was really looking at using WhatsApp and other, you know, uh, sources to reach content to kids. Um, so, so, you know, so that kind of barrier um, we kind of overcame. Um, and then they said, you know, what is in it for us? How can we keep people motivated? How can we keep ourselves motivated, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we redesigned the app and I will encourage everyone to actually download the app. It's totally free. It's available on Google Play Store. You can type in Top Parent app and you'll get it. The app is age and grade specific. We have four age groups we are dealing with, three to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight. Um, we have multimedia content, so we have educational learning videos for kids in partnership with multiple organizations like Tic Tac Learn, you know, KEF, Pratham, uh, Sesame, you know, who are all kind of giving us the child learning content. We have, we produce in-house uh, all the parent facing content. Um, and we have a, also a partnership with those education who do audio content and we kind of, you know, audio visual, visualize it at our end. Um, so, so we work with these partners to actually deploy content that do three core things. One is that based on a 52 week curriculum at the back end, which is mapped to the NCRT framework, it provides children educational videos that they can see and learn from. It provides parents with information knowledge building videos around early childhood development, including areas around child protection, social learning, emotional learning, physical well-being, etc. 
And it also provides parents with very specific um, activity-oriented videos where they can help scaffold the learning at home through play-based activities, right? Like, so for example, hey, you know, get your child to fold clothes and through that you can teach child patterns and shapes or how to increase their daily vocabulary, right? Or how to make your environment more print friendly, et cetera. So that's one piece of it, which are more video-based. The second thing is that we've developed um, as a proprietary tool, gamified worksheets, again, which is mapped to the curriculum at the background in English and the math, which takes a child from emergent um, literacy and numeracy to foundational literacy and numeracy. Um, it works on a learning progression. And, uh, and the third thing is a fun quiz because a lot of parents told us, but check your general knowledge. So, um, so we said, okay, let's provide them with something that can also help increase their overall knowledge and vocab, um, you know, et cetera. So we have like a fun family quiz that kids can play. Um, so we prescribe like, families to do a set of these activities per week. So every week we deploy new content, which are age and grade specific. Um, and it's all in Hindi, you know, we have audio support to encourage oral and listening comprehension, etc. So, so that's one big piece of change that we had to do and also to build that big gamified worksheets. What we have done at the back end, which is really the big piece for us, is actually built like a learning engineering model. Um, so we can capture data in real time, which enables us to track you know, users on whether they have watched videos, whether they have completed videos, which videos have they watched, et cetera. You know, how many attempts have they taken to complete their worksheets, have they played the quiz, have they done any other activity, et cetera. This helps us cohort people at the back end. At the end of every month, you know, in the fifth week, sixth week, we give out what we call a monthly assessment. Um, and it's called a monthly challenge, but it's actually an assessment. And it's gamified also, and it's kind of a weighted average of all that the child is supposed to have learned during the course of the month. And it's a simple multiple choice, you know, yes, no question, which again allows us to cohort kids at the back end on whether they are, you know, below that 30, 33 percentile, below that 60 percentile, you know, above, et cetera. And for everyone who falls below a certain percentile, I think we've got about 66 percent, you know, get remedial content and, and parents get extra nudges. So, um, so that's much what we what we have. It's a very simple, very easy to use app. You know, we are constantly tracking data to modify UX UI. You know, we are looking at data to um, to arrive at our engagement strategies. Uh, we are using IVRS and WhatsApp and in-app notifications really effectively. Our click-through rates are very high. And we are seeing like a lot of engagement. So to date on the new app, we have over 82,000 downloads. Um, from a perspective of industry average, we have more than 42% of them as active users, which is all great news for us. Uh, we see that people who end up doing one activity almost automatically end up doing more than one activity. So we have a very big base of what we call super active and champion users. Um, and we see very high completion rate on activities. So, um, so it's been a good, uh, good experience. I think the big challenge right now is how do we scale it? So we are exploring our pathways to scale. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, that we want to do is actually work uh, in partnership with a government um, through both the Anganwari system as well as the primary school system. Um, to see if if that can be a model that we can take to scale. Um, the second thing we are looking at in terms of pathways to scale is actually working through the affordable, low budget private school system. Um, and in that we are partnering with Bartana 
uh, which is another organization that works with affordable private schools to see if we can actually use or they can actually use top parent as a way to supplement um, learning at home, right? And that parent school connect. Um, and the third thing we are doing right now is actually also piloting with uh, communities. So in that we are partnering with another NGO called Saja. Uh, and there we are also conducting an RCT so that we can validate our online data through offline research. So that's pretty much what we're doing right now. It's really interesting to know so much about the parent and your initiatives. Like you mentioned about, uh, you know, monitoring at the back end. So that was my actually next question. You know, uh, what are the metrics as a founder that uh, you use for such innovative uh, initiatives? I think for us, the matrix of success really is two things. One is that, you know, downloads will continue to happen. I don't think that's really a challenge for us. I think the two big areas that we want to track is engagement use and retention on the app, right? I mean, right now we are seeing pretty good retention rate um, and our carry forward rate from quarter to quarter till now is, you know, pretty good. Uh, we definitely want to increase that to whatever degree is possible and therefore, you know, what type of nudges we use and what vehicles of nudges or channels of nudges we use becomes critical. Uh, we, we are tracking like a lot of metrics, right? Our, you know, our, um, uh, our kids completing worksheets, are they doing their monthly challenges, right? Uh, which subject is seeing more views, uh, which are seeing less views? Um, are people actually, um, doing uh, something first versus something like are they watching videos first and then doing worksheets or are they doing worksheets first or then doing videos uh, we are kind of trying to cross matrix that with demographic data psychographic data around you know what type of parents are these are we seeing different behaviors around our fusion of innovation theory on whether early adopters uh, you know are giving us more um, user time versus you know what kind of messaging is working for different types of audiences. We do a lot of user calls. We end up doing about 30, 40 user calls on a weekly basis, just to kind of also try and keep the pulse. You know, I would say that this is like, we are in constant mode of innovation. It's a digital product and I don't think we have a choice because we need to make it current. So to us, data is critical for us to drive views, behavior, learning right and so those are really the big matrices that uh, we are measuring Great. so i also recently read that the madhya pradesh government had launched top parent apart from madhya pradesh what are the other states that where you know top parent has been officially launched by the government or you know uh, has taken a huge uh, leap this was last year though uh, shannon so Last year when we launched, I think the government, well, UP and MP were the two big uh, governments who supported uh, this. Uh, so UP government um, selected Top Parent as part of their mission trainer project. I think at that time, the government, you know, nothing was available. Everybody was scrambling to really combat a big crisis, right? Um, so at that time, uh, Top Parent was selected both by the MP government as part of their COVID relief mission and the UP government as part of their COVID relief mission as, uh, I think that we got some, some support from the Bihar government. Um, so yeah, so whoever was looking at how to provide more integrated services were really looking at solutions. So different people were using different solutions. So those were the big big three for us. We also got a lot of support from social media, actually, uh, you know, who ran big campaigns, etc. So I think that kind of drove a lot of the organic downloads for us. And even today, MP remains one of our big use states, right? Uh, MP, UP, Maharashtra actually has come up as, you know, I don't know why, because we don't have the app available in Marathi. We want to do it in Marathi, and we don't have it. But I think Bombay or Maharashtra, because it has a lot of migrant populations, you know, so we're seeing a lot of downloads from Maharashtra as well. 
that's awesome uh how is the covid pandemic affected the app initiative like in any way has it affected the app downloads or you know the uh, overall working of the app well we launched in covid and according to me covid is still on so i don't have a, unfortunately a comparison point to tell you but i'll tell you the reason why i think this potentially is a great product and that's why we are really looking at partnerships look it's a free product so you know we want it to be a win win situation for everyone but there are two big things that are hitting us in early education right now okay one is that even though there is the nep is in place i think specific strategies on implementing the nep and the missing piece around nep is this parent child parent school connection right and we really feel top parent can be utilized effectively right in in a systemic manner right where it can actually provide that bridge to connect community parent to school right which is the big mix of missing school piece i think the second thing is that you know the recent studies from azim prem ji as well as asar has highlighted the huge learning loss that has happened and while schools are reopening we still know that the early childhood years are not you know like anganwadis and etc are not reopening okay right now so it's going to be almost two years of learning loss so we think that you know this product can really really enable through again you know whether it's through partnerships with other non profit organizations or community based organizations or the government or the affordable private school can actually provide a continuous support at home level right dovetailing at the back with integrated programs etc so um and i think as and when schools reopen top parent can become a good complementary product you know that parents can schools can use um as part of their overall offering so so we remain hopeful we think it has a huge potential uh we are seeing really good result and traction um and it's real time data so you know what we can really do is provide partners with real time data that hey this school these many parents have uninstalled the app or you know these many parents haven't done their weekly activities right so it also makes it a more efficient system because it's real time data absolutely and finally what are your long term and short term goals when it comes to the top parent app in terms of reach especially so a short term goal really at the end of the year is to get our 250000 downloads and meet our measurements you know that we have promised to deliver um which is around engagement and use etc really look at piloting models that can provide us with information around pathway to scale um in terms of long term you know we've built the platform um as an open source delivery mechanism so uh you know eventually we want to white label this platform for other organizations you know we have the capacity to actually you know expand it to multiple languages um we have the capacity to include content for higher age group um you know we have the capacity to rebrand it and release it and also provide um saas services to other organizations etc cetera, etc cetera. so um so that's pretty much the long term plan is really looking at a more white label licensing model um you know which also is at the core of our sustainability so that's that's where we are all right it was really nice talking to you thank you so Lovely much for this uh it was a great uh, time you know getting to know so much about you about top parent and uh,